Hello everybody, with uh, today's video I'd like to continue my video series on <clears throat> providing evidence and proof for the and support for the doctrines of biblical inerrancy, biblical infallibility, biblical non-contradiction, biblical non-confusion, biblical integrity, and biblical perfection. Today's topic will be on what did Judas do with the blood money he received for betraying Jesus? Again, the question is, what did Judas do with the blood money he received for betraying Jesus? The Bible clearly tells us in Acts 1.18 that he, who, Judas, bought a field with the money he received. Judas bought a field. With the, I'm going to read from, from the Bible, with the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open and his intestines spilled out. Hmm. Now imagine him going, buying the field, paying the money, and I don't know if he trampled or stumbled upon a stone or I don't know how exactly he would fall. He must have fallen from a very high position, you know, headlong. But it says that his body burst open. So he must have fallen for like 50 or 100 yards height. And it doesn't say anything about his head. It just says his body burst open and all his intestines spilled out. Another version renders it, now this man, Judas, purchased a field with the reward of, reward of iniquity. Now I want to mention here that he did not know what he was doing, in fact. If assuming that the Bible is true and etc., he did, he did not know that this is the Son of God and etc. etc. He definitely did not know. Assuming that's assuming that the Bible is true and everything what the Bible says is true and etc. And falling headlong, I don't know how you you'd buy somebody, you pay him or or them money, and then you will fall headlong and burst asunder in the midst. He doesn't say anything about his head being hurt or broken. He burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out. Now, the supporting verse from the Bible Is, in, is to be found in Matthew 27, 5. I'm pretty sure most of you are acquainted with this contradiction. Apparent and evident and irreconcilable contradiction. So 
So it says, so Judas threw the money into the temple. So I'm, I want to make sure you understand this. The Bible is inerrant, infallible, without any error, fault, flaw, or omission, without any contradiction. And it's not conf confusing. There's no confusing verses in the Bible. The Bible is not confusing and non confusant And it's absolutely clear. There's absolutely no lack of clarity in the Bible. And it's entirely holy and thoroughly throughout inspired by God and the Holy Spirit. And according to many Christian websites, apologists, theologists, etc., uh, the Holy Spirit has personally superintended, it super uh, supervised the people who wrote the Bible, and according to some other, he has even superintended and supervised the translation, translators, and the cop copiers or copies who were. So now we have here a verse that clearly, apparently, and evidently contradicts the verse in Acts 1.18, which is the verse in Matthew 27.5, which says, So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. He, Judas did not go to anybody to purchase a field. I want to make sure you understand that. Then he went away and hanged himself. Judas went away after throwing money, the money into the temple, leaving and hanged himself. Now, I want to talk to you about some logical absolutes because human beings are born and endowed by birth with a rational brain with the capability of reasoning, of making deductions inductions, conclusions based on valid and sound arguments with the ability to think, with the ability of critical, applying critical thinking, with the capacity of skepticism in, the, in, in its very neutral sense of the word. In other words, questioning everything, not being gullible, although I think most people in this word, world are gullible. To understand our surrounding world well, and to do philosophy well, it's important to know some fundamental principles of logic. And logic is actually the study of reasoning. Now, this is what differentiates people from cattle and the rest of the creation. In other words, the flora and the fauna and the rocks, the mountains, the, the um, fish, lizards, etc. The capability, the ability of reasoning. And reasoning is the process by which we use evidence to make judgments, to try to discover or persuade our others of the truth. Reasoning is verbally expressed in arguments, 
And these arguments need to be valid and sound. Now, there are, in principle, three laws of logic or fundamentals of logic or law, laws of thought, they're called also. One of them is the law of non-contradiction or the principle of non-contradiction, which states that contradictory statements cannot both be true in the same sense at the same time. In other words, the, tr the, tr the two propositions A is B and A is not B are mutually exclusive. They cannot be both at the same time. The other law of logic or fundamental of logic is the law of excluded middle or excluded third or also called the principle. Principle comes from the Latin word principia, main thing, fundamental thing, basic thing, beginning, the foundation the principle of excluded middle or excluded third that states that for any proposition either that proposition is true or its negation it's true is true in other words either a proposition is true or it is not true there cannot be a middle position a proposition cannot be both true and untrue The third principle or law of logic is that the law of identity. Basically, it states that whatever is, is. Now, regarding the law of non-contradiction, And I apologize for having mentioned this and talked about it in my previous videos, but for those of you who have not listened or watched them, I'd like to repeat that because I want to make it clear. An A cannot be both A and not A in the same sense and at the same time. A thing cannot both be and not be at the same time. Like a chair cannot be a chair and not a chair at the same time. And the color blue, can, uh, something cannot be blue and not blue at the same time. And in the same sense. The law of excluded middle continues that everything must either be or not be. Cannot both be and not be. In accordance with this law of excluded middle or excluded third, for every proposition or statement, either its positive or its negative form is true. And the law of identity for all A's, for, for all A, A equals an A. Now, going back to our topic. What did Judas do with the blood money he received for betraying Jesus? According to the laws of logic, he either bought a field or did not buy a field. It cannot, it's impossible for both of them, for, for both of these statements or propositions to be true. For him to both have bought a field or and 
to have not bought a field, as well as it's impossible that he, he, Judas, throwing all of the money into the temple, going away, and hanging himself, and at the same time not going into the temple, not throwing the money into the temple, and not hanging himself. Now, violation of these principles of logic, because that's how human society, human beings function. Violation of these laws of logic result in logical extreme, big, huge, irreconcilable, inexplainable, logical fallacies and and equivocations and in fact result in conclusions that that are false that are not true that are ridiculous now it's clear from what we have just read and please don't take my word for it but go and analyze read your Bible if you haven't read it it's impossible for these two verses to be reconciled. It's impossible for both these verses to be true. I hope after this video, if you have not done that already, to disengage if you are in a mode of blind faith disengage that mode and engage the mode of critical thinking skeptical thinking apply and turn on your reasoning capacities and reasoning abilities and analytical thinking because that's what differentiates a human being from like i said from the rest of the creation his ability to think and reason and analyze things i love you with the love of the lord thank you very much for listening and watching until the next time god bless you bye